right, body nerds. Today, I am so excited to bring to you my dear friend, Sybil Solon, and we're going to be talking about skin. So, oh. Sybil, I mean, I kind of let the cat out of the bag, but tell us, what do you like to get nerdy about? I love to get nerdy about skin and skincare and actually formulations. I love to actually get nerdy about what goes into products and what makes products work. Mm -hmm. This is all true, you guys. This is very true. So the last time Sybil joined us here on the show, we talked about SPF, and I have a confession to make. Um, I got a sunburn two weeks ago, and I'm peeling from it. And you'd think that like I've never lived in a place that has sun, um, and I'm sorry and I'm ashamed. Okay, I just need you to know that up front. <laughs> uh, the, the 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 truth of that is that it happens usually once a year that we forget that the sun comes out, and then it's yes. so strong. Yeah. It happens to almost everyone once a year where we're like, oh my God, is it summer coming? Yes. And I just, I don't want to carry the shame by myself. So I must also say that few, uh, past guests and future guests, Sarah Court was with me too. And she also got sunburned. We were both texting yeah. one another like, oh my God, how did we let this happen? <laughs> yeah. Well, it does happen. And it, you know, I never say feel shame. It just it reminds you that you're human and that the sun, it's hot. <laughs> the sun is hot. <laughs> That's so true. Yeah. So. I wanted to chat with you today because I've been working with you to do this really awesome, um, like fascia facial, yes. which is like the best way to describe it. And, you know, just scrolling through Instagram, you can see there's a million and one ways to change your face because of course, mm -hmm. you know, society says, God forbid you look old. Um, but there's a lot of ways to change your face that are like injecting things or blasting things or like making your face bleed and then putting the blood back on your face to help with that. Um, is it what I really love or, about or putting strings in your face and, oh, and, and, yeah. and hiking it up? Yeah, totally. Yeah, just pulling it tight as tight could be. Um, so what I love most about this go with the flow recipe from you that I've been doing is like, it takes no time at all. Um, and also I'm not injecting or doing anything to my face. So could you just like, what the heck is going on with like face massage and like how, what's happening here? Yeah. So the glow with the flow method essentially is you are doing acupressure to your face. You are manipulating the fascia tissues. You're going deeper into the skin to the nervous system and you are moving your lymphatic system and you are doing that all at home five minutes a day. That is what you're doing. And it's a pretty simple system. So what happens with your skin is there's been all this stuff done with the skin that if you touch your own skin and you massage it, and it really doesn't matter how you massage it, you will see changes in your skin. Mm -hmm. Plain and simple. You will see changes. So pretty much there's all this stuff on you know, the market where it's just like, we'll suck it, we'll blast it, we'll manipulate it, we'll roller it you know, mm -hmm. we'll shot it, whatever. And all it comes down to is we'll massage it and you'll see changes. Right. And, and that is a beautiful, beautiful thing. So pretty much if you do anything where you kind of manipulate, you rub it, you will see changes. Collagen and elastin fibers will get better. One of my favorite studies to talk about is Murad, who is a pretty famous doctor who created a skincare line. He did a study and the study was, you know, he was like, I'm, I'm going to have people put product on their skin and I'm going to see how this product works. And then he's like, I also have a placebo group and they're also going to put product on their face and it's going to be a useless product. And guess what? They also got results. And the reason why both groups had to manipulate the product on their face for two minutes. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Right. And I was working for him at the time and I was like, oh, so I need to make sure I learn how to massage people's faces. And that's what baby esthetician Sybil learned about <laughs> massage. <laughs> Right. Well, and I feel like we're, or at least for myself, that I was raised to think like, you know, don't touch your face because then it's going to like fall off and you're going to just like have all of these wrinkles. Oh, no. It's I know. Not. <laughs> no, I mean, because some of the stuff too from you that I've learned and again, have seen on the internet, like people are like picking and pulling and like really stretching the skin. Right. How does that help? Like, what is that doing? Right. So, you know, we've been taught, I mean, the European method of skincare has kind of been like, be super careful. Don't touch it too hard. Be delicate. The skin is a very rugged, rugged thing, right? So the top of the skin is, as we age, it'll get thinner and finer. But it's like, it'll stay less fine and thin if we actually manipulate it more. 
So if mm. we get deeper into it and we get into those fascial structures and we get into that, that, that musculature, we keep the skin flowing and healthy, then it will stay plumper and then it doesn't get as weak. Mm -hmm. And that is the kind of the difference, this idea that it's going to get weak and sad and we have to be like baby it. And we've had that time. So if you look at your skin and it gets thin and it's dehydrated and maybe you've scrubbed it too much, maybe you've messed up the barrier somehow and it's irritated. Well, in that case, you probably don't want to be like pulling and tugging because you've irritated and you've messed it up. You have a a thin piece of tissue paper, right? But if you look at somebody's skin where it's like nice and plump and it's lush and it's yummy and it can, it can fluffy. Yeah, it's fluffy. It can it can tolerate being pulled and manipulated. It just bounces right back. It doesn't care. Mm-hmm. Right? And that's our goal. That is ultimately the goal we are trying to get to. And I don't care if you're 100 years old. If you've taken good care of your skin, it probably is closer to that fluffiness. Yeah. Well, use it or lose it absolutely applies yeah. here with the skin as well. Yeah. And so that is what, you know, my philosophy and so many more like Asian philosophy on skin is like, we need to manipulate it more. We need to touch it. We need to do the more rugged kind of like, like pulling and tugging on it. And we don't need to pull and tug on it so much that it bleeds or that it, you know, it, it hurts really bad. It can hurt so good, mm-hmm. right? but we don't need to make it so that you get bruised. You know, I, I, I'm a firm believer in your whole philosophy. It doesn't need to hurt to work. Mm-hmm. Right. Oh my yeah. God. I'm just, I'm like cupping on the face and like, I've done that accidentally to myself. And I was like, oopsie, <laughs> left a bruise here. Didn't mean right. to do that. Right. And we can learn from that because a lot of times if we have less left a bruise, that could mean that you just don't have enough circulation there. It could mean you're thinner there. So, you know, we can learn from that. I mean, I use a machine called the hydrofacial and sometimes if I take it across somebody's skin and all of a sudden I find a place where I've given them essentially a hickey. I'm like, ooh, so I know that that spot is a spot that maybe they're not getting enough manipulation. They're not getting enough product, so they're drier, mm. right? So we can learn from spaces like that. You know, it happens often like in thinner areas around the bones, you know, just like if you've ever shaved and you're like, oh, I nick myself in the same place over and over again, it's mm-hmm. thinner skin. We don't mm-hmm. have as much fluffiness. But Alex, you massage, you roll all those places. Do you find that they're fluffier now? You're less like, oh, yeah. Yeah, you're less, yeah. you won't nick yourself as much. Yeah. And they're just, the same thing happens in the body as well. The more that you do it, the more tolerable, deeper pressure is like the better work you can do. And also it's more maintenance rather than like really trying to make a ton of change happen. Right. Right. And the same thing with the face. That's why we start, you know, you start with, with the glow with the flow method, we start with, you know, a five minute treatment. And then a few weeks later I come back to you and say, Alex, how are you doing with that? What, what changes are we seeing? And how were your changes, Alex? Oh, I mean, it was amazing. I'm going to post the pictures on social. So as you're listening to this episode, like go look on Instagram. Um, The texture, like this fluffiness that you're talking about, that was the most interesting thing for me was that like even just applying product or washing my face, I'm like, oh my gosh, it's like, it's spongy. It's well hydrated. It just like, it feels healthier. Um, And then it just, even like the product itself feels like it can soak in better because like the surface is, it makes me think of, um, gardening, Mm -hmm. right. And if you have like hard packed soil, the water just like kind of runs off it versus if you have like soil that's been turned over and it's like, you know, there's air in it and it can like, it's fluffy, right. Right. This, then the water can soak in and the nutrients can soak in and like things can grow. So basically you just don't have hard packed dirt on your face. And it's really great. (laughs) You know, it's funny that you say that. And you know, I talk about that a lot with skincare and how I talk to clients about the fact that you actually need need hydration in the skin and that it often takes a little time for the skin to get used to having product, especially hydration in it. People are like, Oh, my skin is sticky. It's tacky. I don't like putting moisturizer on it. My skin doesn't like hydration. And I'm like, no, it's like, if you've ever lived in the desert, your skin is a desert. And when it rains, the water just rolls off the top of it. Right. Mm -hmm. If you lived in California, you've watched the flooding happen. But if We've had consistent rain just a little bit over and over and over again. Suddenly the, the, the earth is more malleable. It's taken in water. And so something that is wet will easily take in more wetness, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. right? Whereas if it's dry, it just, it just, it, you know, like, likes, like, and if it's not that way, it just repels it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And so that is what happens with the skin. So when you first start any new protocol, a lot of times your, your body's like, I don't, I don't like this. When you first start rolling, your body's like, ah, this hurts. 
as you continue, your body's like, oh, this is good. I'm into yeah. this. Right? This is cool. I'm into yeah. this. I'm, I'm all right with this. So when you first start with the glow with the flow method, or, you know, you start with even just manipulating your own face, so you're at home, you're kind of take your own fingers right now. Take your own fingers. Hopefully they're they're cleanish. I know. I was like, I don't remember last time I washed. I don't know. Hopefully they're cleanish. Oh my gosh, you're touching your skin. This is one thing I do not like touching my face, but I do make sure that my hands are clean if we're gonna do this. Go ahead and touch your face and just kind of walk around. Take your fingers and just kind of walk them around your face. And what you'll notice is that you have places that feel a little uncomfortable. Feel places that you're like, oh, I want to stay there. That would feel better. That that feels nice. Ooh, I like that area. Um, other places where you're like, I don't even have very much sensation there, right? Mm-hmm. And if you notice that there are places you don't have sensation, that's actually where you do need to work it more. It is often your forehead around the eye area, um, sometimes near the bridge of the nose. We tend not to have as much sensation there. And the reason why is because we're, we just don't get enough movement in that area on our own, mm-hmm. right? And then if you touch your, around your jaw, so many of us clench our jaw, you touch that area, you're like, ooh, maybe I feel zings. Maybe my ears start to pop. I mean, yeah, I'm already getting like a sinus drainage just from doing this. But that's that lymphatic you were talking about, right? Yeah. So you get three things when you're working on kind of manipulating the skin. So the first is you're getting a kind of a deeper, a deeper muscular movement, right? So you have this deeper muscle movement, which it allows that muscle to kind of like release the fluid that are in it, the toxins that are in it. And then you have that fascial structure, which and some people are like, I don't know what fascia is. And hopefully most of your listeners do. But the way I like to explain fascia is if you've ever seen a chicken breast, it is that thin coating on the outside of a chicken breast. Mm-hmm. You um, kind of like peel it away. Yeah, you kind of peel it away. Um, it also is the stuff that's on the outside of an orange, that little like that fluffiness that's on the outside of an orange, right? That kind of stuff. It kind of sits on the outside of the skin, right? Big sweater. So you have that and you can kind of feel that when you move everything around. And if you ever have like what we call it adhesions, mm-hmm. that's a fancy word for stuff that gets stuck, right? So you're moving stuff around. You're like, ooh, it doesn't really move well. It's, 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 it's jammed. Most lines are actually, most of your facial lines are actually just fascia that's jammed up. Mm-hmm. And no one else is going to talk to you about this. You can inject the hell out of those lines. You can put all kinds of stuff in them, but you could also just massage them. And a lot of times they'll start to go away. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's not the line that needs to be massaged. It's somewhere down the chain. Oh my God. It's it's like what I've been talking about all the way. I know. It's amazing. (laughs) It's like if it's between your brows, often it's your neck or it's your mid back. Mm -hmm. Your front of your pec. Oh my gosh. I mean, I feel like. I hope I shared this before, but when you were doing, um, one of the facial massage classes, I eagerly volunteered to be a a demo model. So basically I got to go to Sybil's house at like four o'clock, five o'clock in the morning morning. for like two weeks. It was great. Um, but I had so much fascial tension in the front of my neck and chest that I hadn't even realized. I knew that I had had some neck pain going on and I had been really working at it from the back and around. Um, and, the way that changed my face, because we would always do like one half and then take the like half time like right. before and after. It was like like two face from the cartoons, or literally like half of my face was you melting like and the other half. Them. You would look it like was, a perfect victim. Yeah. It was intense. It was so intense. But working on the fascia through the front of my body, understanding what was going on, and then continuing that work on my own like changed my neck pain where it's now like, Oh, I know exactly what's going to happen and what's going to trigger it. But now I have to do even more to get it to happen. It's like, it's in the rear view mirror rather than something that I'm experiencing all the time. Right. And, and that is, that is one of the things that if you are able to like be a body detective and work on yourself and be aware. And you, you know, if you can work with a massage therapist or a, an esthetician who's working on these things and be aware of what's happening, you can then pinpoint it on yourself and then go home and continue to work on it. Because once a week, once a month, they're not going to stop it. You mm-hmm. need to constantly be working on it. You need to retrain it as Alex talks about all the time, mm-hmm. which is why blow with the flow method. You do it daily. It's mm-hmm. just a retraining. Yeah. Cause even, so for someone who like, you know, maybe they're like not ready to like go all in, um, 
even when you're washing your face, right? That walking mm-hmm. your fingers around like you're talking about, are there mm-hmm. other like massage things you can yeah. do while you're washing your face? So, I mean, I have a bunch of Instagram videos. So if you go to your skin fitness expert on my IG, I have a ton of videos where you can go to the highlight reel and I, I wash my face every Tuesday. People can watch me, but generally circles are good philosophy, good circles and different, different pressures, good philosophy, kind of find different pressures. So the deepest pressure you want, you kind of, kind of hard, that is your muscle. The next kind of level up, that is going to be your fascia. And then if you go, your lightest, super light, like you're just barely moving. That is your skin. Mm -hmm. So, and you can go different and do those different pressures will move different things. All right. And the super light will also kind of help move the lightest amount of lymphatic fluid. Mm -hmm. Right. But we forget that the lymphatic fluid actually gets bound up in that fascia, which is why sometimes we have to go like a little bit deeper because it gets just, it just gets all bound up in there. Mm -hmm. So we have to kind of like let it go. Uh, and also you get a lot of toxins with, so I can look at somebody and know that they're kind of like very, if you ever looked at yourself and you're like, I'm looking very round today, right? That is because you probably have a lot of fluid. I held a lot of fluid because I had a bunch of my lymph nodes taken out because I have no thyroid anymore. So I tend to get very, very round. I get a lot of fluid that I hold. And you know, when I do a lot of the lymphatic movements, it goes away. Mm-hmm. And a lot of it comes from the pec up the neck. And that is why we love Gua Sha, because doing that with your hand, it gets tiring. Mm. But when you do it with a Gua Sha tool, it's much easier and it goes much quicker. And Gua Sha, is it like a tool that is shaped just this way? Or is it like all of the tools that are like flat with round edges? So Gua Sha tools, there is so many varietals of Gua Sha tools. And it's a matter of choice. For me, I personally like a Gua Sha tool that is made of... Uh, is made of ceramic and I like ones that are kind of shaped by artisans that are shaped like our hands that are mm-hmm. a little more shaped towards our hands so I keep ones that are made by they're called mill face and I like them because they're actually shaped in the shape of our hands and if you're watching you can actually see that they're shaped like mm-hmm. our hands um, but any any tool that you use that is has a flat edge is essentially a gua sha tool, right? Okay. Any, any tool. And you can even use the palm of your hand, the side of it. And you can mm. technically consider that your gua sha on yourself, right? Mm. So, it's um, just a technique. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, right. and this would also be great too, if you're having, you know, it's springtime, people have allergies and you get like a lot of congestion through here because that's all lymphatic fluid as well. So anything we can do to like keep stuff moving would be helpful, right? Absolutely. And so you had spoken earlier about cupping. So cupping is great because one of the things it does is it creates suction. And suction is something that we've used in the beauty industry for for years because it creates collagen and elastin fibers just by the nature of kind of like ready, pulling on the skin a little bit. (laughs) And then the suction itself, it's a light movement. It's a light suction. And then it, it moves that lymphatic. So it's all about the direction in which you cup your face. And so you're always moving outwards and then down. Okay. And that is the goal. Always outwards and then down because we're working towards the bottom of the neck and towards the armpit. Okay. Right? The only place that we do different is what, if we're working the center of the neck because we always go upwards because we start pulling downwards. You'll A, feel really uncomfortable. you feel like you're choking yourself out. <laughs> right? You feel very, very, very choky. Um, also, we don't really want like jowly necks. So we kind of, we do like to kind of move upwards to help gravity. Oh, okay. That seems right. easy enough. Yeah, lymphatic kind of likes to move this way a little bit, likes to move upwards on the neck area, but everywhere else, outwards and down. Now, it came back to me. It was not the cupping. I remember you are the brave person who will buy all of the Instagram ads for beauty tools. I will. I <laughs> and will. then it was that suction one that you had like hickeys oh all over God. your face. <laughs> oh my God. So I bought, so I have a hydrofacial machine. If you're watching, you can actually see behind me. Artificial machine. And this will be on AE Wellness YouTube if you're like, wait, where can I see all these things? (laughs) I I love my hydrofacial. I'm a huge proponent of hydrofacial. There are a lot of knockoffs out there. They don't work. I've tried them all. (laughs) I've tried them all. Alex and I talked, I I think for weeks. I know. I was like, buy it. Come on, buy it. (laughs) And I finally purchased it. And I actually have a video on my my YouTube about trying it. 
And essentially it's a handheld <laughs> hydrofacial that you take home and it sucked my face and left me bruised. <laughs> and also left red marks on my face. It was not pretty, y'all. It was horrible. And I had a bruise. I want to say I had a bruise, a bruise for like four days on my chin. Oh my God. It was, it was not pretty. It was not pretty. And it hurt. It, it hurt me. And I am sad. And it's a torture device that now sits in a cabinet. <laughs> so this is like, I, I mean, I fall for it all the time. You guys, like I will see, uh, you know, different beauty products in my, you know, ads and I send it to her and she's like, no, this is crap. Don't buy it. I'm like, Oh, but look at, it's like special. So like trust the experts. Don't be putting like crazy stuff you see on the internet on your face. Oh, please stop. Don't and generally, <laughs> if you think this looks amazing. It probably isn't. And I, you know, it's hard. I fall for it too. And I do this for a living. It just sounds so amazing. They use such wonderful copy and then you get it and it's just a piece of crap. <laughs> Wait, but what about that? This is going off of our fascia facials. Yeah. Um, that like Korean mask that makes you like all wrinkly, but then you wash it off and you have a new face. Oh, that like here, here, or something. I think it's like here mask. So that technology has been around for a long time. It's not fancy technology and it uses it uses um, like an egg white technology. Oh, Just so you know, that's what it uses. Um, Epicurin is a facial that I've done for years and it works awesome. There's a DMK facial that does kind of the same thing. I mean, essentially what it's doing, it's just creating uh, what I'm going to say a big word. It's called vasodilation, which oh. is circulation in the skin. Right. We love circulation in the skin. Alex, why might we like circulation in the skin? Well, because then it brings nutrients in and garbage out. That is correct. It absolutely does. It also creates pumping. So pumping action in the skin is great because it creates lymphatic drainage, mm -hmm. which is great. It also, anything when we bring a blood supply up to the surface of the skin, it allows our, any product we stick on to be brought into the skin faster. Mm. And so in skincare, we love to create circulation. Mm -hmm. One of the ways we create circulation is with massage, <laughs> right? M massage creates a lot of circulation. It's why we like to make you a little bit pink. That's why people are like, oh, I got so red. Okay, well, I mean, I don't want you to go home red, but I don't mind you getting a little pink or red during the treatment, as long as it's not because I burned you, but because I created blood supply. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? So that is essentially what that treatment does. That's all it does. It creates vasodilation, which you can do lots of ways. You can use like a cinnamon peel mask. You can use um, different kind of papaya enzymes. You could use some cupping suction. I can just sit around and pinch my cheeks and That's I do much. I have so much fun washing my face every night and like doing all these different massage techniques. And then I do my glow with the flow recipe and mm -hmm. yeah, there's so much. And that's why I wanted you to come and share with us because there's so much that you can do for your face, like literally just in your bathroom while you're getting ready for bed that can make you feel better about your skin. When I first started working with you, like I wasn't really stoked with my skin and I'm talking like, what is it? Gosh, like 10 years ago, yes, like forever. I know. And you were like, Alex, you need to stop eating bread. And I was like, but I'm like, Oprah, I love bread. I will not be giving up bread. Um, not surprised I gave up bread and my skin has never looked better. It's true. It's true. And one of, one of the things I really love about essentially the glow with the flow method is it is, a, it is, a, it's a, such a simple tool. Essentially mm -hmm. you're using a, a $10 tool off of Amazon. I don't even sell these tools because I'm just like, you know what? You can go buy one off of Amazon really easily. And if you wanted to use the back of a pen, they just don't work quite as well, but you can. And you're, you're doing pressure points that are also attached to the rest of your body because we forget that it, our whole body is one organism and the skin is the largest organ of it. Mm -hmm. So when we see something happening on the face, it's telling us something else is going on in our body. Our face is one of the few things that we actually look at the skin and, and we can see it with our eyes and we notice things. Mm -hmm. So something happens on our back, our body's like, we don't, nobody even saw that going on. <laughs> something happens on our face. We're like, what's happening here? Mm -hmm. So we might actually pay attention to it. We've just learned to ignore it, burn it off, scrub it off. Cover it up. It. Right. Mm -hmm. Instead of being like, I wonder why I'm getting brown spots there. Hmm. And then be like, well, maybe it's because my spleen is struggling. Maybe mm -hmm. it's because my liver needs detoxification. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's because I'm having trouble with my diaphragm breathing. Maybe my mm -hmm. lungs are having trouble. So one of the things that I've really loved about this is that as we work on it, 
people are like, oh, I noticed that like my wrist doesn't hurt as much. I'm breathing better. I'm sleeping. I'm pooping better. <laughs> like all of those things. Yeah. I mean, you think it wouldn't be connected, but like literally your whole body is interconnected. And so why, why not put your best face forward? I had to, I'm sorry. It was really, yeah, really true. corny. It's true. Um, it, we, we do have to put our best face forward for everything. Mm-hmm. And one of the things that I really promote to people is that you can do so many things at home that, and I love product, but has nothing to do with product. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I love product. I have shelves of it. I use a ton of it myself. I believe in product. I love it. But for the, there are times where you're just like, listen, product isn't the answer this time. You need to no. do something else. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. I almost forgot, but I will have to ask you this mm-hmm. on all of these tools, gua sha, rollers, yeah. etc. cetera. Yes. Does it matter if it is jade or rose quartz mm-hmm. or something else? This is such a good question. So my personal belief is that in general, gemstones cannot be sanitized or cleaned very well. So <laughs> I'm like, Oh wait, I was supposed to be cleaning it. What? <laughs> Well, you are putting it on your face. I know. So I do like them to be washed after every use. Most stones are not really supposed to be like, you know, soaked and stuff very often. And so they don't really like to go on the face. Also, they're not designed to be put with a lot of oil and a lot of product. And they're just hard to clean. So my favorite product to have like tools on the face are what I call inert products. Mm-hmm. So we're looking for something that's um like you know metal real like a ceramic a real stone that's just like a really boring stone <laughs> like you know something that's that you not can, pretty yeah and also something that can't break on you really easily so I've yeah. had a few different people be like I had this beautiful fluorite beautiful fluorite gua sha and it snapped on me and then cut me and I was like nice great times good time. oh gosh. <laughs> So I, I'm, you know, in metal, a lot of people use metal gua sha's. I, I like ones that also tend to be, that take on your temperature of your skin. So metal is okay. Um, but also I find that you taste the metal. So I'm, I'm careful with my metal. Mm-hmm. Um, even my, even the um, tool that I use for my glow with the flow method, which is an acupressure tool. I'm trying to find one that's not even metal for that because I taste mm-hmm. the metal. Mm-hmm. So. If anybody knows out there, let, let Alex know and she'll tell me. Yes, we'll connect. So ceramic is my absolute favorite. And I've I've liked a few of the um, the wood ones that have been out there that are covered. The front is so they're the wood base, but the front is covered in in like um in like a, a, sil- a silicone and they move pretty well. So mm. if you've been out there, you found the silicone ones. They move pretty well. So there'll be like a wood base and then the t- tips are moved or silicone. Mm. They move pretty well. Mm, good. To that's, know. Like a new, that's a new thing that's happening right now. The silicones. I know. I was like, oh my gosh, I haven't even seen that. I have to go look it up. Yeah. The silicones are pretty hot. They're like, a, they're not the sticky silicones. They're like the harder silicones. Yeah. Mm. Silicone's super easy to clean. I really dig silicone. Yes. There's a reason why it's used in medical devices. <laughs> yes. It's, it's super easy to clean and you, it's also fairly inert. And I like it a lot. Okay. So if somebody wanted to get a glow with the flow recipe or work with you or ask more questions about skincare, where can they find you? Well, they can easily find my, find me on my Instagram, which is your skin fitness expert. Mm-hmm. Uh, I also have a website. So it's csolon.com. So you can find me there. And I mean, you can always email me at csolon at gmail.com. Do people still email these days? I mean, sometimes if I have to, but it's really uncomfortable. I know. <laughs> like, Can I just send you a DM? School, if you're old school and listening. <laughs> I mean, Alex and I do a different podcast and I give a phone number and she's like, what? I give a phone number too. No one, no one calls me a lot or just, I got, I did get solicited one time for a date. That was interesting, but. Oh my, that's, that's unusual and strange. Fun times. And this is why I don't answer my phone. <laughs> There you go. There you, I mean, you live in some strange times. It's true. It's true. Well, hopefully everyone has learned something interesting and awesome and maybe we'll go out and rub their faces, play with some tools and understand that their hands are one of their strongest, most useful tools that cost them no additional money. Yes, 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 yes. I love it. I love it. Thanks for being with us today and helping us get nerdy about our skin. 
Thank you, Alex. I can't wait to be on again. What do you want to see more of? Comment below and let me know. Also, make sure you give this video a thumbs up so that more people can find it. And definitely make sure that you hit that subscribe button so that you'll get notified every time I put out a new video.